Hello everybody! In this tutorial you'll learn how to simulate a pendulum in Python. As a little motivation, the exact trajectory of a pendulum cannot be calculated mathematically, so a simulation is needed. At one point we will need a little bit of math, but otherwise the implementation is straightforward. First we need to import three Python packages. We use NumPy for the math, PIL for image manipulation and pyplot for nice plots. Here is a little sketch of a pendulum I found in the internet. It consists of an arm of some length, a mass shown in red and an angle which we call theta. The first concept we need to understand is called the initial condition. If we know the pendulum's angle and its angular velocity at some moment in time, we can in principle precisely calculate the past and the future of the pendulum's dynamic. In order to start our simulation, it is therefore enough to choose an initial angle and an initial angular velocity. Note that our angle is in radiant. Next, we need a function that draws the pendulum for a given angle. We add default arguments for the image width and height and for the pendulum's mass and length. They are not very interesting for now and you can play with them later on. In the first line we create a white image with our specified width and length using the PIL package. Then we convert the length of the pendulum to the units of pixels. As a little extra we will make the diameter of the mass dependent on the mass. Image draw that is also imported from PIL makes it easy to draw lines and circles into our image. In these lines here, we set the coordinates of the pendulum. We place it in the middle of the image. The coordinates of the mass can be calculated from the angle using trigonometry. And finally, we can draw the pendulum's arm as a line and its mass as an ellipse, which in this case is just a circle. Then we return the image of the pendulum. Okay, let's check if our function works using our previously defined initial angle. Et voila, our pendulum has just become real. The next thing we want to know is the pendulum's energy. This will later be useful to check whether the energy is conserved during the simulation. We write a function that calculates the potential and the kinetic energy of the pendulum's mass given an angle and an angular velocity. The potential energy is calculated by this formula here and the kinetic energy is given by the formula down here. If you have detailed questions about the formula, I will be happy to answer them in the comments. Our function called getEnergy takes as input an angle and an angular velocity. We then simply calculate the potential and kinetic energy according to the above formula. With this function we can for example calculate the energy of the pendulum with our previously defined initial angle and initial angular velocity. We see that the kinetic energy is zero which makes sense since our initial angular velocity is zero. The potential energy is negative because with our initial angle the mass is below the origin of our coordinate system. We are now coming to the core of the simulation, namely the physical rule of how a pendulum moves. The path that a moving pendulum traces out is called a trajectory. For a given initial state we aim to calculate all future states of the pendulum. Physics gives us the corresponding differential equation for the time-dependent angle. It would go beyond the scope of this video to explain in detail the derivation of the differential equation. Hence, I simply write it down for you, with the note that it follows directly from Newton's second law. As already mentioned in the beginning, this differential equation has no exact solution in terms of elementary functions. The power of our simulation is that we can numerically approximate the time continuum by discrete time steps. Even if you have never heard of this concept, you are actually very familiar with it. Right now you are looking into a screen which is not really as sharp and smooth as you might think. Your screen is made up of millions of small LEDs, light emitting diodes. However, I am sure that you agree with me that the approximation is good enough. The most simple discrete time approximation is called Euler's rule, 
which states that given the state at any time, we can calculate the state one time step later via this big scary looking rule down here. Again, it would be beyond the scope of this video to explain why this approximation actually works. If you need an answer right now, Wikipedia might help you out. But enough of math now, let's write some Python code. We need a function that calculates the trajectory of states for some number of time steps, which we call n iter for number of iterations. The smaller the time step, the more precise is the approximation. The downside is, however, that the smaller the time steps, the longer it takes to compute the trajectory for some fixed amount of time. In the function we define a numpy array called phase traject, which we will fill with the pendulum state at each time step. Doing so, we make a for loop over the number of iterations. At every Euler step, we use the last state to calculate the next state until we are finished. Let's quickly go through line by line. The first line corresponds to this part of the equation. The second line corresponds to this larger part of the equation. And the third line corresponds to this equation. Okay, as always, we need to check whether our function actually works. We choose a time step of 5 milliseconds over 1000 of iterations. This means that the duration of the complete simulation is 5 seconds. We can then calculate the trajectory by using our initial angle and angular velocity. The results can be visualized by plotting the pendulum's angle at any time step. And yeah, we get a nicely smooth oscillating curve. But note that similar to your LED screen, the smoothness is just an illusion. What about energy conservation? Since our pendulum has no friction, the total energy, that is the potential plus the kinetic energy, should be constant over the complete simulation. This code snippet calculates the energy at any time step by using our previously created function called getEnergy. However, the plot shows that the energy is clearly not constant and that it increases by 1.2 during the simulation. This is because our discrete time step approximation is not very good. As already discussed, we can choose smaller time steps which gives us a more precise approximation on cost of more computational time. To show you that this is true, we decrease the time step by a factor of 10 and correspondingly we need to increase the number of iterations by also a factor of 10 in order to get again a simulation duration of 5 seconds. We can then calculate a new, more precise trajectory and calculate the energies. Indeed, we see that the approximation is much better since the energy increase is reduced to only 0.1. Finally, we have all pieces together in order to render any given trajectory, that is, turn a trajectory into a video of a moving pendulum. All we have to do is to draw a time sequence of pendulum images, since, as you know, a video is nothing else than a sequence of images. If we want to simulate the pendulum in the correct physical time, we need to think about how many frames or images we want to show per second. Since our time steps are very small, we don't need to render every point of our trajectory. So we define two parameters. The first is called frames per second, which tells us how many frames we show per second. And the second is called take frame every, which tells us how many trajectory points we can skip between any two frames. Let's now write our rendering function. We will collect all frames in a list called frames. Then we save the frames as a GIF in the current directory. So let's look into the function. We see that we have a for loop that goes through all states in the given trajectory. If the loop index is dividable by our parameter take frame every, we draw a pendulum image using our previously written function draw pendulum. 
Then we append the image to the list called frames. The code snippet starting at line 12 saves our video as a GIF. As a little extra, we also print the initial energy as well as the final energy of the pendulum simulation. Finally, we can call the rendering function and look at our final product. If you want, you could try yourself by extending my code to an implementation of the double pendulum. Double pendulums are extraordinary physical systems with fascinating properties. And some of them you can watch in my episodes of Fun with Pendulum.